You have tuned in to the Designer Within podcast, episode number four. Welcome to the Designer Within podcast, the business-minded podcast created for interior designers and creatives by an interior designer and creative. Me, I know firsthand the challenges, but also the victories that can come with our careers. And I'm here to sip and spill the tea with you. It's time to dive deep within yourself and redesign your business and your life from the inside out. Together, we will uncover secrets and share valuable insights. So prepare for a truly transformative experience because it's time to unleash the designer within. Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to episode four of the Designer Within podcast. I hope you're having as much fun listening to the episodes as I am having recording them. It is just a blast. I feel like I'm just having a cocktail or coffee with you, probably a cocktail, chatting about the careers that we've chosen, the ups and downs of everything, and hopefully sharing some insights on all of that. So I hope you're enjoying it. If you are enjoying the podcast, please feel free to leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcast. It helps other people to find the podcast and it helps me to share the message with more people. So thank you so much for giving us a review and helping us to spread the good word. Today's episode is about one of my favorite topics, which is marketing. Does that put a scary vibe in your mind? Do you get a little timid when you hear the word marketing or sales? If you do, this podcast episode could be for you. I actually love marketing. It is one of those things that just comes naturally to me and always has. And it's always been sort of fun to me. And even sales has been fun for me. And marketing and sales has always been something that not only was I good at, But it's always been something that has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. And I've always found a way to incorporate that. From when I was a child, my mom was having a yard sale and I thought, hmm, maybe I could bake some cookies and cupcakes and sell them to everyone coming to the yard sale. And that's what I did. So every time she would have a yard sale, I would make cupcakes and cookies and sell them to people as they shop. It's always something that's been inherent with me. And it's easy and fun and I do enjoy it. And I sort of parlayed that into my life from early on. In a former life, for instance, I wanted to be an actor. And There was a television show being filmed not too far from my home, and I made it a point to stalk, (laughs) I use that term nicely, but I did hang out by the set as much as possible, and one day, the production designer of the television show happened to waltz right up and start talking to my mom and I, and we were talking, and I was saying, yes, I really wanted to be an actor, and I love this show, and it's one of my favorites, and I would love to be on it, and he was such a nice man, gave us tours of the set, gave us his contact information, and I kept in touch with him. So I kept reaching out to him, and then eventually I said, okay, I would love to be on the show. What do I need to do? And lo and behold, he got me onto an episode of the show, all because I was what I call pleasantly persistent with him, and I did not give up, and I made sure that I was marketing myself to him, that I loved the show, that I would do great on the show, that I was a supporter of the show, and it eventually worked out in my favor. It was a very natural feeling for me, and it was not anything forced, and we're going to talk more about how you have to believe in what you're selling to really make it work. And that was critical to why this worked for me. Another experience that I remember was I was on an HGTV show before I officially started my design career. And by being on that show, it actually got me more experience and more attention from the consumer community at large. And it really spearheaded my design career and got my foot in the door with so many different people, including a fabulous LA design firm that I started working for after that show had aired because that particular firm had seen that episode and I became friends with them through other friends and then we were able to chit chat and then they said oh I loved your show and then I casually said well you know if you're ever thinking about bringing on another designer in LA let me know because I was not living in LA at the time I was in Florida and again that simple technique of just marketing and always putting my best foot forward led to a phone call about two months later, I would say, asking me to come and interview for a position. So again, another way that you're always selling yourself, always selling the positives of how you can benefit others as a team, as an employee, and as a company. And most recently, a big marketing effort was put forth when I published my first book. And I do not have a literary agent, 
This book publishing deal was strictly done with myself and my husband. We developed a detailed marketing plan and a book pitch for my current publisher who agreed to publish my book. And it turned into a great lesson for me in the fact that if you do present yourself well to other people, and you continue to present the benefits that you're going to bring to other people and what rewards you are going to give them, and you come from a serving mindset, we're going to talk more about that too, then the rewards are beneficial and everybody does benefit from the arrangement. And that is exactly what happened from my book. So I'm very proud of the effort that I put forth. It wasn't just a simple, yes, you've got the deal. It was a lot of back and forth. It was a lot of preparation on my part. And I'm going to do an entire episode down the road about how I got my book published, what went into that, and all of the details behind it. But I did put forth a lot of marketing prior to getting the book deal, which did help my publisher understand what I was bringing to the table for them and how I was going to help make the book successful. Dolly Parton, I don't know if you guys know, she is one of my favorite human beings on the planet. I love her for her business acumen. I love her for her humor. I love her for her singing. I love her for everything. But she has this thing that she says, this little saying. She has a lot of them. But this one that I particularly love when it comes to marketing, she just says, sometimes you got to toot your own horn because if you don't, nobody knows you're coming. And I think that is so true. We get so wrapped up in what other people are going to think and we're afraid to say what we have going on and we're afraid to say what exciting things are happening because of fear of looking as if we're bragging or being overly boastful. And it's not the case. You are just stating the facts and you do have to toot your own horn sometimes. And if you don't toot your own horn, you need to hire someone who will toot your horn, aka a publicist. So there's a lot of different factors in there, but I do feel at the very root of that, you can act as your own publicist a lot of times, and you can act as your own best marketing person, your own best marketing expert, and you should definitely toot your own horn. So today, all of that being said, all of those lessons I've learned over my career and my life and all the things that I've done to market myself and my companies, I've owned several companies and design, as you guys might know, is a second career for me. My first career was in business and the marketing side, again, has always been a part of me. But today I wanted to share with you my top five marketing tips for any business. Now, these are marketing tips that have definitely worked for me and in many of the businesses that I have worked in and owned, but specifically for my design business. But they do work for any type of business that you're working in or that you own because marketing is marketing. And the five marketing tips that I have for you today will definitely apply towards any business. So listen closely, take some notes, and I hope that these help you to market yourself better and to market your company better. First, you have to believe in yourself and what you do. I mentioned this on a previous podcast, but it's so important that you believe believe in yourself. You believe in what you are selling. You believe in what you are doing. I have worked for a lot of companies over the years before I started my own specific business that I'm working in now. And it wasn't that I didn't believe in the product. I did believe in the product, but I didn't enjoy the product that I was selling to people. I knew that it worked and I knew that it was something that would help other people because I had seen it work before, but it just wasn't something that I was passionate about. And when you're not passionate about what you are selling to other people, it comes through on the other end and everyone can see that, they understand it, and you have to be passionate about it and you have to know about it. You have to know every single detail about it and you have to believe in yourself when you are selling that to other people. So when you're marketing yourself and when you're marketing your company and marketing what you're doing, you truly have to believe that what you are telling the world is so great and wonderful. You have to deep down believe that it is true because if you do not, then no one else will. You also need to sell a solution, not a service. This is important because many times we can sell a service. So as a designer, I could sell interior design services very easily, right? I'm an interior designer, I'm going to sell you an interior design service, but I would rather sell a solution to your problem. That is what clinches the deal. It is that emotional attachment. It is the resolving of a problem that a client has that will get them to move forward with closing the deal. For instance, if I'm talking to a homeowner and I present to them my design services, here's how I'm going to renovate your kitchen. It is an island. It has five seats on it. There's a banquette. There's pendants. There's a refrigerator, blah, 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 blah. 
It's all the things. Those are just facts, right? Those aren't anything emotional. However, if I sell them on the fact that you can sit here, have dinner with your family, every single member of your family can sit at this island, you can serve them dinner from the other side, have plenty of space to chit chat as you're preparing dinner. No one has to sit in a different room. Everybody can sit there. There's an area for your other child to do their homework. They don't feel like they're away from you while you are preparing dinner. It just conjures up this feeling that I know that most families want to have. They want to have this group environment. They want to have this closer relationship. We had this happen with a client and the house was very large, lots of spaces where people could hang out. However, after chatting with the client, we realized that what they really were searching for was a closer relationship with their family. And therefore, we devised a brand new kitchen that did solve this problem. And after that, we had a spot for every member of the family to hang out in the kitchen. And it was so fantastic. We would come over after the house was finished and every member of the family was in the kitchen hanging out. There was refrigerator drawers for everybody's drinks. There was a place to do homework. There was a place to do bill pay. Everything that needed to be there was there for everybody to hang out. And the mother was so happy. So sell a solution to the problem that people are looking for rather than just selling your services. Anybody can sell a service. You have to sell a solution. Okay, that was number five. Believe in yourself and what you do. Now, number four. Separate your ego from marketing and selling. This is something that I had a really big problem doing in the beginning because our ego is such a part of everything that we do in our lives every day. But what we have to stop doing is we have to stop taking things personally. When a client says no, when someone says they don't like something, when someone disputes what we are saying, we have to stop taking that personally. It is not a personal attack. And something that I do is I basically develop this persona that is still me. But it's this braver, more confident, more articulate me. <laughs> and it ends each call with a successful outcome. So whatever I'm speaking to someone about, if it's a sales call or a marketing call, it is this higher level of myself that even I am not aware of. So it, it is almost like this persona that I take on, this Superman character, if you will, that is going to achieve everything that I want to achieve with this marketing pitch, with this sales call. By having that in my head as I'm going into that, again, I'm not a different person. I'm still myself. I'm just putting myself up on a higher level to where I am going to achieve the outcome that I want to achieve and to where my ego does not get in the way if someone says no or they do not like something. So please stop taking things personally because every no is a step closer to a yes. I know you've heard that in the past, but it's so, so true. I once had a business that I owned where it was literally door to door and I would go door to door and I would sell advertising on a printed publication. And every no that I got was hard in the beginning, but I did know that every no taught me a lesson to grow, to learn, to change what I was saying, to adapt my pitch, to maybe say things differently, to get to a yes. I knew that all of those no's were going to eventually lead me to a yes. So if I went through the day and I had eight no's, at that point I knew my closing ratio was about 10 no's to one yes. And if I was on no number eight, I knew that I had probably had two more no's to go before I could get to a yes. So I would tweak my little spill a little bit, find out a way to introduce myself differently, maybe highlight a different part of my presentation. And then on number nine and number 10, I would get one step closer to closing the deal. Those no's will lead to a yes because you are learning something about yourself. You are learning how to better present yourself and you are learning how to better relate to the person that you're speaking with. And we really have to be chameleons as salespeople and as marketing people because when you are marketing yourself, you have to adapt to whomever you're speaking with. Everyone perceives things and receives things differently. And I find that if you can quickly pick up on to whom you are speaking with, you can adapt your language, you can adapt your body language to that person and better relay your information to them and hopefully get to a yes a lot quicker. But don't take things personally. They're not personally attacking you. At that point, if they don't know you, you are just someone else pitching something to them. And by the way, even if they do know you, even if it's a client and they poo-poo one of your design ideas, don't take that personally either. 
That is not the intention of the client giving that information to you. The intention is they are giving you their opinion, which is a valid opinion, and you need to respect that. I also want to remind you, don't get defensive or weak. Be strong in your stance and in your pitch and in your pricing. Never get defensive enough to start fighting back and never get so weak that you lower your price or make huge concessions. Don't start trying to fight back with people when they start giving you all of these reasons that they don't want what you're trying to market to them. It's okay. You need to be strong in your stance, proud of what you're selling, proud of what you're marketing, and don't give in, don't fight back, and don't lower your price, and don't make any big concessions just because that one person did not agree with what you're saying. And lastly, stop the comparison with competitors or others. It will get you nowhere. If you're comparing yourself to what another company did or what one of your quote-unquote competitors did, and then even if the other person that you're speaking with is trying to compare you to another company, it is not probably apples to apples. And that company does not run their company the way you run your company. And that person does not market their company the way that you market your company. So stop the comparison with others, stay true to yourself, and stay strong in what you believe and what you are presenting. Separate your ego from your marketing and selling is number four. Number three, know who you are marketing to, which for me means my ideal client typically. So that is the person that I'm trying to market my company to online, digitally. It is the person I'm trying to market my company to at any speaking engagements typically. And I want you to think about that person who you are marketing to when you are marketing your company. And of course it could change. Like for myself, of course, I have my business courses that I teach to designers and to creatives. That is a different ideal client than when I'm marketing my design business, which which is a consumer driven business. My design business is marketed to my ideal design client where my business courses and my online digital courses are marketed to the design community and other creatives. Think about who you are marketing to. It's very critical that your message stays the same. It is consistent and that you always have that ideal client in mind when you are marketing your company. And it makes what you're saying come out so much easier. You never really have to stop and think about what you're saying because it does flow naturally. I also want you to think about long-term, not a quick sale. Long-term is always the end game. You want repeat clients. You want referrals. You want people to say, oh my gosh, I had such a great experience with this company, with this person. You're not just out for a quick sale. I want people to remember my company not only as great designers, but also as great human beings. And that should be the goal for all of us. I want all of the warm and fuzzies. I want all of the hugs when they see us out in public. And I want a long-term relationship. I want a relationship that turns into referrals, that turns into thank yous, that turns into birthday wishes, that turns into holiday wishes. You get what I'm saying. So think long-term when you are marketing to your ideal clients. Here's a few other client selling techniques that I think could help emphasize partnership. I love the word partnership. I have it on my website. It is a value that I hold true to my company and working with anyone is a partnership. I'm not a dictator. I'm not going to tell a client what to do and I'm not ever going to work with someone who I don't feel that will also bring value to the relationship. Partnership is super important. So try to emphasize the partnership when you're working with with your ideal client. Next, empathy. Always have empathy when you are partnering with people. Empathy shows that you care. Empathy shows that you understand. And empathy shows that you have been there and done that. Transparency and honesty is also something that you guys know I hold true to and is a very big value for me. By always being transparent and honest, I never have to come back and worry about something that I said, something that I did. You never have to backtrack. You never have to cross out something and fix it because what you said the first time was the truth and it was honest. Listen more than talk. This is hard sometimes, <laughs> um, especially for me because I do like to talk. But it is important that we listen more than we speak. And I think the rule is about 80-20. If you can listen 80% and speak 20%, because by listening, you're going to be able to adapt what you are saying back to the person and cater your presentation, cater your marketing to their needs. So always listen to what people are saying. And if they're not telling you, ask for feedback. Ask for feedback in a newsletter. Ask for feedback on a social media post. Don't be afraid to ask for feedback and don't be afraid to listen to people when they are giving you that feedback. Also, just relax and be yourself. It's important that we just chill out, be ourselves, 
take a breath. It's not like we're presenting to the president of the United States. This is a moment where we can put our best foot forward. And the more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you're going to be and more relaxed you're going to be. I find the more nonchalant, the more relaxed I am when I sell and when I market my company, the more receptive everyone is who receives that message. Educate yourself on various marketing techniques, such as digital, in-person, newsletter, email, blog, social media. You get the picture. These are some of my favorite ways, and I just want to highlight a couple of those, but they're really all valid ways to market yourself and your company. And if you're not doing some of these or all of these, you really should try to employ some of them. Digital marketing is super important. It's really just where marketing is these days. Almost everything is digital marketing. I also don't want to negate the in-person marketing. I love in-person marketing. I love going to events. I love shaking hands now that we can do that again. I love walking up and introducing myself to people, telling people about my company, about myself. Nothing has a better retention than when you can share a personal story with someone, let them know something about yourself that causes something to stick in their brain to remember you long after that introduction is over. And I find that a lot of times at industry events where there are cocktail parties or where there are luncheons, those are great places to do in-person introductions. And by the way, these in-person introductions don't always have to be trying to sell something to someone. It could be when you are possibly looking for a licensing deal, looking for someone to partner with as an ambassador. You get the idea. So always be, again, putting your best foot forward. Have a personal story to share about yourself that will cause that person to remember you. If you're not doing a newsletter, I do suggest that you do one to your database. If you don't have a database, then I suggest that you get a database for your email list. To do that, you need to get a call to action. You can put a call to action on your website. You can just simply add a CTA, as they call it. And that CTA could be a little freebie that you give out to someone. And then by giving out that freebie, such as on my website, I have my top five tips to design like a pro. And by entering their information, they are added to my email list. But then they also get my little booklet that gives my top five tips to design like a design pro. So you can come up with whatever you want. I like to rotate mine out. I have several, but you can come up with whatever you feel comfortable with, how to design the best kitchen layout, whatever works for you. But come up with a call to action that will grow that email list. You can use things such as Flowdesk. You can use MailChimp. Lots of software out there that can help you grow that list. But I do encourage you to really work on growing your email list. And when you get that email list grown, you can start nurturing to those people on the email list via a newsletter. And everyone loves a newsletter, keeps them up to date about your company, what you have going on. But it also lets them know if you need to offer them something or if you want new business, whatever you're trying to do in a, again, non-pressured way. That newsletter is a great way to do that. By having that email list, you are becoming a trusted advisor to the people who have subscribed to your list. I also love a blog. I love our blog. We have such a good time writing our blog. We update it once a month and our blog has become really popular. We have people who read it and we have people who offer to actually pay to be on our blog because of the rating that it has and because of the SEO that it has developed. So I encourage you to, even though it feels a little old school, I encourage you to add a blog to your website. It's not very complicated and write about what you know, write about things that you feel the public wants to know, write about things that you want to do to grow your business. If you're looking for a partnership, if you're looking for a licensing deal, if you are wanting to add a new service to your company, write about it. It will get attention. And then you need to share that on your social media, share that in your newsletter, share that online. All these places that we have talked about marketing yourselves, you can share that blog in those areas. So I do encourage you to write a blog. It is one of those long-term things that is just worth doing. And if you're thinking, John, I don't have time to do a blog, I barely have time to work with my clients. Trust me, if I have time to write a blog, you have time to write a blog. And the way that you do it is this. You sit down and you block off two or three hours of time once a week, once a month, whatever you need, and you batch. So you write four or five blog posts for the upcoming months at one time. So here's how we do it. At the end of every year, we will forecast what our blogs are going to be for the upcoming year. And we basically make a calendar with our blog topics on it. So January, February, March, all the way through the end of the year, we come up with a topic each month and then we review it with the team to make sure that it does sound appropriate for that month. Then we pre-write all of the blogs as much as we can. Now, there are times, of course, when we can't get them all written. 
but we do try to batch them up and have them ready to go. But we just wrote one, for instance, in July. We're in July right now. We just wrote one about travel and how travel influences design because people are taking vacations. Obviously, there's holidays that come around. We all know Christmas happens in December every year. If you're going to write about the holidays, then you can write about the holidays in January for the upcoming end of the year. You can batch these blogs up and have them ready to go when you need them ready to go. So you're not waiting until the last minute. You have them ready to go on your website. And if you're confused about how to write a blog or even where to start, just keep it simple. Write it as if you're talking to your best friend. Keep them around 500 words or so. And also be sure to break them up with some nice photographs of your projects. It just adds more to the interest factor of it. And it also helps to promote your projects as well. And don't forget good old social media. There's so many ways to market yourself on social media now. Of course, with threads, the new threads is out there, which I'm not too sure about yet if it's helping me to market or just helping me to have fun with people that I enjoy. But regardless, it's there. But social media is, of course, a big component in marketing techniques, and you should use it as part of your marketing. Don't do what a lot of people do and have social media as your only marketing. It should not be your only marketing plan. You should have a mix of a lot of things, such as Google ads and your blog and your newsletter and your in-person, but social media should definitely be part of that. Now, if you're looking to learn more about marketing, there's lots of ways to do that. Of course, you can take online courses. I offer them. You can read digital marketing blogs. You can listen to podcasts about marketing only. So just spend some time and educate yourself further on marketing techniques. And I feel like it does always change. I try to keep myself up on various marketing techniques. And I actually try to experiment with them on my own so that I'm not just telling you what to do. I'm practicing what I preach. Typically, if I relay something to you guys, it's something that I have tried myself and either succeeded or failed. And I will let you know which one of those it is, but I'm always learning and always growing from all of these sources. Of course, AI is out there now and we can jump on over to one of those AI sources and it can help us to write a blog post. Be careful when you do this that you're not plagiarizing someone else's words because what is on the AI is just being pulled from other sources. But I don't say that you can't take that as a starting place from it. You can actually go there and have it help you write a blog, go to an AI chat and say, write a 500 word blog about X, Y, and Z and see what happens. At least it gives you a rough outline for it and gives you the premises if you have nowhere to start and not an idea of what to write about. I also wanted to mention if you're a little apprehensive about writing or maybe writing is not your forte, there is something called the Hemingway Editor and it's the Hemingway app Dot com, just like the, the writer, but it is a writing tool and it basically analyzes your text for readability and it offers suggestions for simplifying and clarifying what you write. It does that by highlighting complex sentences, your passive voice and other common writing issues, and it gives you alternatives. It's online, it's a web-based tool, and you can also download it on your desktop, but it's named after Ernest Hemingway, obviously, because he wrote very clear and concise. So if you're worried about writing in a clear and concise way, and you don't want to repeat yourself, or maybe you just want to check up on yourself, try the HemingwayApp.com. It does help. And we've made it to number one. I'm gonna review the top four first. Number five, believe in yourself and what you do. Number four, separate your ego from marketing and selling. Number three, know who you are marketing to. Number two, educate yourself on various marketing techniques. And number one, drum roll please. Turn your selling and your marketing on autopilot. Ah, what does that even mean, right? I know, I came up with this term because I hated always be selling because it just sounded obnoxious. So I decided to rephrase that into autopilot selling. I'm going to tell you what that means. So my number one tip for marketing yourself and your business or anything is to turn it on autopilot. And here's how you do that. I want you to sell and market yourself and your company in a way that is a natural extension of yourself. It's not obnoxious. It's not overbearing. You're coming from a serving mindset. You are serving the person. And by coming from a serving mindset, you are always going to be selling. <laughs> you are always going to be marketing when you don't even know that you're doing it. 
And I love autopilot selling because you are putting your best foot forward in every situation, whether you're at a chamber of commerce meeting, whether you're at the grocery store, whether you're on the phone, on a Zoom call, it doesn't matter. You are the best version of yourself and you are the best person to market and represent your company and by extension, your brand. So here are ways that you can turn yourself on autopilot selling and marketing. Be honest, be transparent, be clear. You've heard me talk about this before. It's worth repeating again. There are three P's that I love that always went over in any selling or marketing situation. Personality, have a personality, be interesting, be yourself. Your personality is what separates you from others. So show that when you are marketing yourself and your company. Positivity, be positive. Nobody wants a Debbie Downer. Be positive and be excited about what you are presenting. And the last one is proof. Show some proof that what you are saying is true. Next, you've heard this before. Know what you are selling. Know your product. Know your service. Know your company. Know yourself. Know what you are selling. I also want you to know and sell your special sauce. What makes you special? What makes your company different? Yes, you might be an interior design firm. Fine, there's lots of those. What sets you apart from someone else? Do you have systems and processes? Do you have a certain design style? Do you have a certain team? What do you do? What does your company do that sets you apart? And what is that special sauce? And how do you present that to the world? How does that set you apart from other people? On that note, by the way, sometimes that special sauce is something that you think that everybody has, but it really is not. So look deep and figure out what that special sauce is, that special ingredient that you have, and really hone in on that when you are marketing. And lastly, continue to learn and grow, just as we talked about before. Always learn and grow. You're not going to learn everything about marketing and sales right now and then say, that's it, I'm done forever. It's always changing. There's going to be something new on the horizon tomorrow, I promise you. But all we can do is learn about it and then implement that into our companies when and if it happens. So just be prepared to know that change is inevitable and we are going to work those into our marketing techniques. But the basics of what I presented to you today will always apply to every single aspect of marketing your company. Well, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode about marketing yourself and your company and can take these tips, apply them, grow your business and to be a little braver and to be a little stronger in what you are presenting when you are showing your wares to the world. Remember, be proud of what you've done. You've worked hard to get your company to this level. You are the best spokesperson for your brand and you should always, always be putting your best foot forward. And that is it. I will see you next episode of The Designer Within podcast. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. See you soon. You have been listening to the Designer Within podcast. If you enjoyed this and other episodes, please subscribe to the podcast and give us a rating. We really appreciate it. For more information on how to transform your business, your life, and your home from the inside out, visit johnmcclain.co. That's johnmcclain, M-C-C-L-A-I-N dot C-O. See you next time.